Morning guys, James here from Sunseeker Southampton. Top of the Hamble River for us today. We're up at Eastlands Boatyard to take a look around a really unique boat that we would see here in the UK. She's an Italian 1999 built by a Flash 48. A pure pedigree, Arneson power, twin Volvo 480 horsepower engines with those surface drives and what a machine. Here she is. Welcome to Blue Nile. Been based here in the UK since new. We've known the last couple of owners that have had her always here on the Hamble. It's a real sleek boat, massive four deck, probably 60% open bow there and then the 40% cockpit back there. So it gives a real racy look, very deep V hull, great performance. We're looking 38 knots flat out of those Arnesons. So rare to see a, a performance boat like this here in the UK. More akin normally to the Mediterranean climate. This whole roof section here is removable. It has an opening centre section up there at the moment, which is how the current owner has her configured. And then this full camper canvas has been designed custom for the back end here to give a big usable cockpit. Okay, on the market now, £115,000 tax paid. We've got all the full documentation, good service history. Let's head on board and take a look around. So I've just stepped up onto the side deck here. See some clever little touches like additional stitch handles in the canvas just to give some security as you walk along. Got a big rail running down the roof here just to give you sure footedness as you get up onto that massive open bow. And then you can see a centre section here where a set of our, uh, sorry, bow sunbathing cushions would, would sit. See the boat's not moving around, no creaks or groans at all whilst I'm walking around up here, despite it being acres of fibreglass. It's such a, such a sleek and mean looking machine. So we've got an anchor, anchor locker up here forward. Space to store some fenders. End of season now, so gel coat started to dull off a little bit, but nothing that a, a fresh cut and polish wouldn't bring back to nice shine again. It's a sort of, uh, it's not a bright white, more of an off-white stroke cream colour. And then you've got this band of blue round here, which is a wrap. Easy enough to change if you wanted to do something a little different. But I have to say the colour scheme works really nicely with those blue canopies. And the opening hard top also being done in blue. So you can see how that now opens up just stick the camera in through the top here see how that opens up the cockpit below that we're going to have a look at shortly um, up top worth noting so we've got a couple of horns a 12 nautical mile radar there from Raymarine remote control spotlight single VHF aerial So, and in theory, this centre section here can all be removed back, just leaving a, a radar arch running through the middle if you wish to have the boat totally open. So if we just walk back down the side deck here, so you can grab hold of things like the canopy here and step down into the cockpit. So you've got teak laid cockpit sole here. Again, looks pretty good. And the aft end, we've got this ginormous sun pad that sits over the engine hatch, which will lift up shortly so you can see the machinery space. The canopy's really transformed this into a real open, usable space, standing here at the forward end of the cockpit, looking aft. Got that giant, giant feeling where normally the canopy would come off the roof here down at 45 degrees. Which you'll see most of them online in Italy and what have you would generally be set up like it's more of a storage cover whereas this makes it very usable so we've got two cabins plus a big saloon downstairs two bathrooms and rare on something this size but typically Italian we have a crew space as well it is rather boutique in here but more of a handy storage locker for most owners 
uh, obviously still in regular use with the owner so lots of personal items still on board but down here there is a, a small a small bed that sits on that floor space and then you've got a loo and a little sink down here as well it's more akin to say for most owners is somewhere to keep your water sports equipment and what have you and then coming around here these are refrigeration drawers on the end of the top here we've got a storage cupboard and a sink and then a big u-shape seating area opposite the helm on this sort of raised plinth gives you nice visibility out through the side windows so you've got good panoramic visibility here tabletop obviously opens up for dining or you can fold one leaf across if you want to make that more of a coffee table bit of padded space up top here so you've got space you want to put kids up here or somewhere for the dog to sit there i say you're boating as a family and then on the helm here it's a sort of one and a half person co-pilot seat probably squeeze a couple of people on there if you're friendly and that's the viz from the helm so we've got a lovely big windscreen there and all the controls falling closely to hand so uh, we've got an st60 speed depth down here volvo's evc throttle controls so the engines are TAMD 74s which are uh, 480 horsepower each does a top speed say around 38 knots cruising sort of 28 to 30 knots most efficient with the Arneson drives the obligatory drive trim and the trim tab controls here on the dash and a nice bank of LED touch button switches here for things like the opening hard top above us lighting and, and horns etc controls and in readouts for engine and drive trims we're on the probably an original raymarine c120 chart plotter but these have been recently updated so this is the autopilot control for uh, mo modern raymarine color instrumentation here and then we've got this is the remote control spotlight and an inverter system up top um, hours wise we just flash up the counters so we're reading 891 hours as of mid-october but still in regular usage by the owner most weekends so that might creep up a little bit let's head on down into the accommodation and have a look around so we come down these triple steps into the saloon port side this huge linear sofa arrangement looks like it's had a couple of extra legs added over the years for the table there for some additional support uh, it's a high gloss cherry wood finishing here on the cabinetry we've got little gold fittings on the handles say showing a little bit of wear but adds to the character of the boat so given she's not brand new so these are the main banker switches covering the 240 volt and the domestic systems on board uh, the up upholstery is an alcantara fabric it's sort of royal blue color no nasty marks on that and then we've got blue carpets And the galley itself has a cherry wood floor there, obviously with the overlaid carpet just to keep that protected. So linear galley to starboard, lots of storage cupboards here. This one's the fridge, good size fridge. Storage cupboard up above here.
plenty of space for several days away on the water. So we've got a microwave. Control here for the Wabasto diesel heating system. Uh, we're on UK three pin sockets. We've also got some little USBs up here as well. Easy enough to change those back into Italian plugs if you needed to take the boat down to the med with a two pin arrangement. Uh, we've got a two burner electric top there. And then the accommodation itself is split into two cabins with two bathrooms. So if we start aft, this is the twin guest cabin. Slight reduction in headroom, obviously as you head further aft, but there's space to come in through the door here. Spin the ramp camera behind us. We've got full height headroom here to stand and change. Nice port light there, letting in natural light. Curtains have been changed to a more modern fabric. Good size wardrobe. Storage drawers underneath. We're on LED lighting as well, just to cut down the use of the power. Uh, quite a nice feature, they're all electronic dimming lights as well. And then across the other side of the companionway stairs, we have the, the secondary heads, which would also be your day heads. So there's a, a shower screen here that pulls round to give protection to the loo, etc. whilst you're using the onboard facilities. Electric Jabsco toilets, and um, you've got outlets here also for the heating in the bathrooms, drying out wet weather gear. And then we come forward, so this is a sliding door coming across here from the left to right. And we come into the master stateroom. So this is an island centerline double bed. Storage drawers underneath. Again, heating outlets down here. Good size wardrobe. Again, same the other side. You'll note that large foredeck up above, we don't have an opening hatch in the roof here. Arguably something less to leak in time. And then the ensuite heads comprises two compartments. So we've got here on the starboard side of the boat, electric vacuum flush toilet. It's got a holding tank system for both toilets, worth noting. And then we've got a separate shower stall this side. So we head back up, we've just got a couple of cushions to take off the top of this locker here. Like so. hatch comes right up. There's a small service hatch in the middle there just for daily checks but worth lifting it right up here so you can appreciate sort of more major serviceability how easy it is to get down on top of those engines. So six cylinder straight six engine big single turbocharger gets up to speed very quickly Uh, you've got water strainers in the middle here. We've got dual fuel filters in the middle, so everything's nice and easy to hand. They're not a, um, a modern common rail engine, so very easy, simple to work on. A straightforward injection. Waterline exhaust on the aft quarters, so sounds quite throaty when it's running. The owner in his time has had the engines out for general tidy up in the engine bay service works and what have you obviously with this big hatch it's very straightforward to do that
and then in the forward section you can see the generators tucked down here in the middle with the outboard aluminium there 1400 litres of fuel on here just drop that back down and then if we come off to the bathing platform so the teak's been replaced in its time showing a little bit of age on here but again just a bit of character really for the boat 1999 build uh, recently replaced the tenders this is a hurley davit system for launching this you have a look online how those work and the owner potentially would negotiate this into the deal as a separate item if wished for by a, a future owner fits the boat on the back there quite nicely about three and a half meters long i would say the sun's come out now so we can start to see that lovely italian styling starting to to bounce in the sun so it's a very pretty boat, very unique here. And great value for money. The owner really hasn't changed this for a number of years because there is much discussion always about what he would do differently. So with the benefit of those two big cabins, two bathrooms, really what is there in the market, this sort of price that does it better. It's a unique boat, very much a head turner wherever it goes. I say great performance, despite the fact it's on surface drives, it is very easy to manoeuvre, it's got bow and stern thrusters to help with close quarters docking and we've got several very experienced skippers that will teach you how to drive an Arneson boat. They really aren't as complicated as many people would leave you to believe, I have to say. I love them. Effortless and look great when they've got a rooster tail stuck out the back running along at 35 plus knots as she does so well. So I say if you'd like to know any more information I've got a full library of photos, all the documentation, etc. So drop me an email, it's james at sunseekersouthampton.com or my mobile is plus four four seven seven four seven six eight six five eight seven. We can have a chat about her and hopefully arrange to get you down on board and have a look around. Hope you've enjoyed the tour today and we look forward to hearing from you.